Okay, here's the problem. Behringer's Firepower FCA 1616 audio interface with 8 inputs, 8 outputs on board audio interface has a major problem. The headphone output levels is linked to the main output levels. And the problem is that if you want to monitor on your headphones, but you want your speakers turned down because you are actually recording uh, your vocals on the microphone, the only way to do it is to actually turn off your speakers because you can't just turn down the volume because that turns down the headphones down. Behringer, what were you thinking? As always, have no fear, Vacha is here to help you out to solve this problem. It is a workaround, but it's probably one of the best workaround that I can actually find. I just recently discovered that I actually done this video some time ago, but for some reason I have not finished editing it and releasing it. Um, and I probably know what the reason is, because uh, when I recorded it, it's quite noisy background, so I'm trying to edit it as much as I can to get rid of the background noise and hope that won't disturb you, but the results, and I hope this will help you out so that you can have a different levels on your headphones and different levels on your main speakers, and you should be able to turn down your main volume thus turning down your speakers, but still be able to hear on your headphones. Now the trick to this is that because uh, FCA 1616 has an option to switch the headphones from outputs 1 and 2, which are the main outputs, into outputs 3 and 4, this video it will show you how you can get audio going into outputs 3 and 4 rather than 1 and 2, and you'll be able to monitor the audio just on your headphones. Anyway, let's get on with the video, shall we? Here is a quick example of how we can create a submix or a headphone mix or headphone cue in Studio One Professional. We simply go into the input and output settings, go to the outputs, and here we add a stereo one, call it sub one, or you could call it headphone output. We assign it to outputs 3 and 4, and we click here the Qmix. By clicking the Qmix, this allows us to control sends per channel. Here's what I mean. Let's apply. OK. Because we clicked the Q checkbox in our headphone mix output, that means when we open our uh, channels, we can actually see we have a Qmix now. So let me expand that. Bring it up, and we can turn it on and off, and we can set the level for each mix as well. So we can adjust the level that is going to the headphones. And if we look at outputs, we can see now that we have also the headphone output right here. This is our main output, 1 and 2, and line output, 3 and 4, that is headphones. We can also adjust the main volume right here as well. So simply what it means that we can adjust levels per track going to the headphone. And this is our main headphone output. And we can adjust that. And the output of this mix is going to output 3 and 4. To show you this example in Traction T6, here is the settings of Traction T6. As you can see, I've got ASIO device selected and the FCA 1616. And I do have my outputs, 1 and 2, as the default wave output. We also have 3, 4, 5, and 6 separately, and 7 and 8 joined as stereo pair as well. And for inputs, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 and 6 as a stereo pair, 7 and 8 as a stereo pair. Here's a project that I have, which has several tracks on there. So what we want to do, to have a headphone cue, First, we need to add a track. We go to Tracks, create a new track, and let's call this Headphone Q. Now, what we want to do is the output. Instead of going to Default Audio Output, we want to select it to go Output 
3 and 4. So any audio on this track now will actually go to outputs 3 and 4. Next, what we want to do is to add a return bus. To do that, we click and drag and put one right here. Traction plugin, and we want auxiliary return. What we're trying to do is create an internal routing system that will accept anything on bus 1. As in my example, I've already called it headphones. So to be able to send any audio down to here, to this track, from any one of these tracks, again, we simply drag one. We can put it either before the main fader for pre-fader volume, so we can have independent volume of what the main mix is, or if we're happy with the mix, we can always drag it to the front of the fader plugin or post fader. But I like to put it pre-fader that way you, I can have independent adjustment of the signal going through that headphone queue bus. Here I'm going to select auxiliary send. And we do the same for all the rest of them, except the headphone queue, obviously. It's gonna, I'm pressing down the control key and dragging it down to the next one, so we make a copy of it. So now, all the audio from this track, which is called Guitar 1, will be going to the headphone bus, which is right here. And there are up to 16 buses we can use. The receiving end of that headphone bus is the auxiliary return plugin, which is again bus number 1, headphones. And that one is going out. If we click over here, you can see it's going out to outputs 3 and 4. So now we have two outputs. One, which is the main output, which goes out master bus. And then we have another one, which is going out to the headphone queue, which is going out to line 3 and 4. So let's have a quick look what it actually looks like on the screen. A bit hard to demonstrate it with the screen capture, but you should be able to see a level going up here. I'm just going to turn all of those down. There we go. So that's our main, as you can see, signal going through to our main bus. And as we increase the volume, you can see there's volume there now on this headphone output. And we can obviously control the output of the headphone there as well that's going to our FCA 1616. So we can turn that off. And then we can adjust the volumes here on our sends, auxiliary sends, different levels to what the main mix is. So if the vocal would like to hear more of the drums, more of the lead guitars, or less of the bass, we can adjust them here. And this is what they will hear. And we can turn this down because it's getting a little bit too loud. So that's how you can do it in Traction T6. Yeah, as I said, I don't know what Behringer was thinking when they were designing this. They probably didn't think ahead. Well, I hope this workaround does help you out and saves you. And again, I do apologize for the background noise. I did remove it as much as I can, but I didn't want to record it again because I had already spent so much time um, editing it and recording it. So please ignore that. As long as you got the information and you got it working, it doesn't matter. The information is the most important thing. Again, if this was helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and all of that things. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.